Anytime it says factor completely, there's usually more than one step. So the first thing that you should always check is check for greatest common factor. Do these three terms have anything in common? All three of them have an x, so we can pull an x out of all of them. The first term doesn't have a coefficient, so we can't pull any numbers out. But we can pull an x out. x cubed, take out an x, you've still got x squared. Negative 4x squared, take an x out, you've got negative 4x. Negative 5x, take an x out, you've got negative 5. Now we need to factor the stuff that's inside the parentheses. And this is our standard what times what is negative 5, what plus what is negative 4. Do you kind of remember this from last semester? Okay. Um, I think that'd be 1 and 5. The 5 would have to be negative to get that negative 4. So that part's going to be x plus 1, x minus 5, and we have the x in front of all of that. So the completely factored polynomial is x times x plus 1 times x minus 5, or x times x minus 5 times x plus 1. The order of those things doesn't really matter. Okay, example B, what do those terms have in common? Can we divide 48 by 3? I think we can, can't we? Yes, we can. So we can get 3 out of everything. And then y to the 5th and y to the 3rd, we can take y to the 3rd out. So whatever your smallest exponent is, you can take that out of all of them. Okay, some people find this helpful. If you write divided by 3y to the third underneath each term, that might help you to see what's left. So the 3 divided by the 3 is a 1. y to the fifth divided by y to the third is going to give us y squared. You have five of them. You're taking three of them away. That means you've got two of them left. 48 divided by 3 is 16, and we're taking the y cubed out. Now we need to factor this thing. Does anybody remember how to factor y squared minus 16? I don't have my perfect squares written up there, but y squared is the perfect square of y. 16 is the perfect square of 4. So that part factors into y plus 4, y minus 4. And we have the 3y cubed in front. That is fully factored. Okay, why don't you pause and try C on your own. So you can divide 5z squared out of all three of those terms, and then the trinomial that's left factors into z plus 3, z plus 3. Because z plus 3 and z plus 3 are exactly the same, you can write this as z plus 3 squared. There's two of them that are exactly the same, so you can collapse that down and put a square on there. Okay, how are you feeling about this kind of factor completely so far? Okay. How many more of these do we need to try? Yeah, it all, it all looks the same. Let's try E. I think we can divide both of those by 3. And how many ends? 5. And the 5th. 3 divided by 3 is 1 n to the seventh divided by n to the fifth is n squared. Negative 75 divided by three is negative 25, and we're taking the n to the five out. On your Big Ideas math assignment, if they use n's or m's or z's or y's, you do need to make sure that you use the same letter. So if you think that your answer is correct and it doesn't work, Check your letter and make sure that you've got the correct letter in there. Okay, n squared is the perfect square of n. 25 is the perfect square of 5. So that part factors into n plus 5, n minus 5. That's the difference of two squares. And that is our final factored form. If you want to, you can try d and f on your own. 
And if you want to check your answers, you can check those with me. Um, if you're virtual right now, you can try D and F. And if you struggle with them or if you want to check your answers, just email me, message me, let me know, and I can show you the answers to those. Factoring special patterns or special factoring patterns. The sum and difference of two cubes. Just like we have the difference of two squares, we have that special pattern where if it's a perfect square minus a perfect square, we can do the thing plus the thing and the thing minus the thing. We also have a form called the sum of two cubes. So up here is a chart that shows perfect cubes up to 1,000. 1,000 is 10 cubed. If you have something cubed plus something else cubed, this formula will help you factor it. Now, I will always give you this formula, but honestly, it's not that hard to memorize and it's easier to use if you have it memorized. Here's how this works. X cubed plus 216. X cubed, that's X cubed. 216 is 6 cubed. So everywhere in this formula that you see an A, you're going to put an X. Everywhere that you see a B, you're going to put a 6. So it says A plus B, X plus 6. Then it's got A squared, the square is already there, minus AB, that'd be X times 6. What is X times 6? 6X. 6X, and then the 6 squared. That ends up becoming x plus 6, x squared minus 6x plus 36. Okay, here's the interesting thing. We started with x cubed plus. This is the sum of two cubes. The first symbol is the same. The next symbol is the opposite. The last symbol is always plus. So the symbols go, um, oops, I need my pen. This symbol is going to be the same. This symbol is going to be the opposite. This symbol is always going to be plus. Because what I'm going to show you in the difference of two cubes is that this, weird, this formula is exactly the same except for the symbols. For the difference of two cubes, this is minus. It's the same as what we started with. This symbol is the opposite, and this symbol is always plus. So if we had x cubed minus 216, x cubed minus 6 cubed, it would be x minus 6, x squared plus 6x plus 6 squared, which is 36. Okay, let's actually try some of these. X cubed minus 125. X cubed is the perfect cube of X. What is 125 the perfect cube of? Five. So in our form, everywhere we see an A, we're going to put an X. Everywhere that we see a B, we're going to put a five. And here's how I do this. X, five. Then it says A squared, so X squared. The middle term, I multiply them together. The last term, I square the second number. Do you notice I didn't put any symbols in there? Because we started with minus, my first symbol is going to be minus. The next symbol is the opposite of that. The last symbol is always plus. So I don't memorize those formulas as different Honestly, what I have memorized is a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared. And then same symbol, opposite symbol, plus. Okay, let's try example b. a cubed, that's the perfect square, or perfect cube of a. What is 27 the perfect cube of? 3. So I've got a, 3, a squared, 3a, 
and 9. I started with plus, so my first symbol is plus. The next symbol is the opposite of that. The last symbol is always plus. Okay, now how many of you are thinking, all right, next she's going to tell us that that trinomial, that we have to like factor that trinomial. Is anyone thinking that? Like, ah, oh, crap, we're going to have to factor more. Typically, yes, I would say that, but if you tried to factor this trinomial, it won't factor. There are no numbers that multiply to give you 9 and add up to negative 3. It just doesn't work. So when you're factoring the sum or difference of two cubes, you are done. There's no second step to it. You just have to get it in this formula, and then it's done. Okay? I want you to pause and try C on your own. Okay, I've got x and 7, so x minus 7, x squared plus 7x plus 49. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. How are you feeling about that? I'm, I'm wondering how many of my virtual students are doing a thumbs up to their computer screen right now. Probably, probably none of them, honestly. If you are, let me know, because that'd be awesome. Okay, E, we're going to do E and G. In E, notice that there's a 64 in front. First, do these two terms have anything in common? Mm, no. But I think 64 is on our list of perfect cubes. 64 is the perfect cube of 4. So our first thing is 4x. 27 is the perfect cube of 3. So we're going to do 4x3. Now here's the thing. This term has to be 4x squared. That means we have to do 4x times itself. What is 4x squared actually going to be? 16x squared. So you don't just square the x, you have to square both of them. So 16x squared. The middle term is going to be 4x times 3. That would be 12x. And then the last term is going to be 3 squared, 9. So when there's a number in front of that first thing, there's a little bit more work because you have to really make sure that you're squaring that whole thing. Okay, we started with plus. So our first symbol is plus. The next symbol is minus. The last symbol is always plus. Okay, in our last about minute and a half, when I look at G, I don't see a perfect cube. I see 6z to the fifth. So maybe these two terms have something in common. I can definitely factor z squared out of both of them, but can I do 750 divided by 6? I can. So this is a factor complete situation where you start by factoring out the greatest common factor, then you do some more difference of two cubes. If it's two terms and you see a cube plus or a cube minus, you know you have a sum or difference of two cubes. Okay, this would be a z and a 5. So I've got z, 5, z squared, 5z, 25, minus, plus, plus, with 6z squared in front. All right, your assignment is in Big Ideas. Remember to get there. You go through Clever and then click on Big Ideas. Find 4.4 Part 1. It should be the only thing in there, I think. There are unlimited answer clicks. So as you're typing your answers in, you can check your answer and, and see how you're doing as you're working on the assignment.